It was a cold, dark day on Crimopolis. I was in my office, as I often am, just going over my latest case files when she walked through my door. This dame was trouble, and you can tell from a mile away. She walked as if she was in some kind of high managerial position, like an office building or something. I didn't care, because I knew when she walked in that I had a case on my hands. She sat down, and she came... Ooh, it is raining cats and dogs outside, I tell you, I can't even... Uh... Ugh. Were you monologuing again? Yes, I was. Why? We're not because that's what we're that's what detectives do. We, we do have a monologue. Had one client. Look, and that was it. Look, and the, we didn't even solve the case detec- well enough. Detectives do monologues. You know, name one detective that does a monologue. Uh, Sherlock Wayne, secretly the Bat Holmes. Did you just? Combine Batman and Sherlock Holmes in a uh, hope to I mean, drive your point home. I mean, who wouldn't? Who would not do that? Wh- what? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Brooks and Zach Hundred Years Podcast. I'm Brooks. And I have an aneurysm, <laughs> <laughs> and that's Zach. So it has been a week. It has been quite the week. It mm. long time listeners, of which there are. None. <laughs> Leho. Leho. It. Leho will know that we have lately, you know, been in a spot of bother, is what some people would refer to it as. You know, a spot implies a quick amount, like a quick, s- tiny bit. I would say a world of bother. But and no. bother implies a small thing. And uh, it's, yeah, it's world that. of hell. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> we're in a very large world of hell, <laughs> but we're 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 slowly getting back on our feet. Our office building, our usual place of business, you know, the one where we make this podcast for you, the listeners, the, was kind yeah. of maybe, you know, uh, attacked by mysterious forces that we don't at this time understand. Mm. But we're on it. That's one mm. of our cases. Yeah. We have it's... now, after braving the sewers of Crimopolis and the blizzard of Crimopolis and all the other really shitty parts of Crimopolis. Every part of Crimopolis. Crimopolis is, the is shit- a pretty it's, shitty city. It's the worst. I don't know why we imagine Pittsburgh why we except well, imagine more Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh plus Detroit plus what Saudi I... Arabia. Plus Saudi Arabia. Except no redeeming qualities that Saudi Arabia has. <laughs> so uh yeah. Saudi like, Arabia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Is it still called Saudi Arabia? I thought they'd change the name of it. No, nah, it's still Saudi Arabia. How many times do you think we can say Saudi Arabia? In Saudi, this Arabia Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, Saudi well, Arabia, now... Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. Okay, uh, about five. <laughs> this is now the Saudi Arabia podcast. Welcome to the Saudi Arabia podcast, <laughs> where we do whatever people do in Saudi Arabia. I'm going to look up their main export. Uh, and... Okay, yeah. So, tell everybody... How the first client came here. Because I already I already know it, clearly. Clearly. It's obvious that I have everything that you're about to say was something that was known to both of us. And it has before been. Before this point. Yep. And clearly, we've, we've known that it, is what is happening. The, the entire week we've known the in, this whole story. As, as always with everything that we talk about, everything we say are real things that actually happened to us in the past before this point. All right. Listening. So then, our yeah. first real client walked in. Yes, and yeah, his name he... was Louis, and he had a scar right under his neck. And Oops. he sat, he sat down. He looked kind of like a, you know, like an average guy, kind of nervous, blonde and hair, everything. blonde, blonde, hair. blonde, blonde hair. hair, dirty blonde. Yes, yeah. it was really. It's just he did not look like he was in high spirits. He, or he high was. Health. He looked pretty strung out, is what I what I noticed. And we're just like, hello, welcome to. The, this room <laughs> and then i'm like and then he's like hey, you guys are the brooks and zach miss you guys are detectives right and see uh i saw i was looking for some pis because i tried taking this with the police and you know how they are so they're very I was corrupt lo- yes. so i was looking for some pis to help me out i came 
And we're like, uh, okay. <laughs> to your office. <laughs> oh, all right. And, and then he dramatically unbuttoned his shirt, and we're like, whoa, okay, all this right. isn't that kind it's, of establishment. Yeah, but I mean, maybe it is. We don't know where we're going to be in the future. We like to experiment a lot. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And then he showed a huge scar running straight down his entire torso. Yeah. Well, most of his chest. Yeah, not I'm not going to say torso, because that implies right. on his stomach as well. It, it went no, about his stomach. Half. He had some nice abs. Oh. Anyway. We and gotta... we're like, my, name, my, name's, my name's Lewis. And I His, lost my lungs. How do you lose your lungs? I mean, they're inside your body. You can't just lose a lung, Louie. Well, fine. My lung was taken from me, oh. asshole. So you're lungless Louie then? <laughs> and then he was like, he was very unhappy with that, which is why we said it more often. And he's yeah. like, actually, it's, it's Louis Stevenson. Oh. Right? And I'm like, Louis okay, Louis. lungless Louie, please tell us what happened. And he's just like, it's, it's Louis Stevenson. Lungless Louie, I can't argue with you. Just tell us what happened so we can help you out, man. And, and he just sort of gave a very deep sigh. Yeah, he just goes into this story about how he was on his way to the bar. He was feeling bored, you know, not really anything to do, so he decided to go to the one bar in Crimopolis. The only bar. The only Crim- bar is a very huge bar. Yes. Imagine taking every stereotype of a saloon that you can imagine, mixing it all together, and putting it in a paint bucket, shaking up that paint bucket as much as you can, and then just throwing it on the wall and going, yeah, you know, that's a, it's not the shade I wanted, but it's the shade I got. I don't have enough products to go back to Home Depot to get more paint, so this is what I'm stuck with. And there you go. You have the entire interior of the one bar in Crowdopolis. He said that the last thing he remember was going to the bar, and he actually woke up in a bathtub yes. in a hotel. Correct. Yes, and we're like, oh, that sounds that sounds awful, Longless Louie. I'm yeah. sorry to hear that. And he's like, I, I just Louie, Steve, just call me Louie, all right? Don't okay. worry, Longless Louie. We'll find out who did this. We'll find the Don't bad. Don't touch me. We'll find the bad people who hurt you, Longless I, Louie. No. God. But the reason why he came to us, which we've established later, was uh, apparently he thought we were the cheapest people on the block, which we are. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think we need to advertise that no. to all the listeners. No. So no. he gave us he gave us the hotel, which is the Livington Hotel. And when he said that, we were just like, Ah, I get it, li- living because you, you live it. You probably get it, Longless Louis. <laughs> I hate you both. <laughs> all right, all right. So Lewis. he said it was room two ninety four. So we made our way. We don't have a car, so we had to walk. Yeah, it was a it was a couple blocks away. Good little jaunt. Yeah, it was a nice. It's nice to get out every once in a while, you know. Yeah, the snow's the, the melted. Blizz, the blizzards let up. A lot of the snow has melted. You know, it's getting warmer. It's not. It's pretty nice. We didn't get mugged. That we did not get mugged. Well, we didn't have much money. I think that's why we didn't get mugged. Yeah, we look very poor. We, we got beat up. And oh the, yeah, we got the shit kicked out of yeah, us. Yeah, we got frisked, time. beat up, but to get mugged, they have to take something of yeah. value from you. A violent taking of something of value, which did not happen. Yep, it was just violence. No, yeah, just senseless violence. Anyway. So we, did... we made our way to the hotel, which is actually a pretty alright hotel. Second floor, 94th room. Yeah, I think that's how that works. Yeah, I mean, in most hotels. I, I don't know what the number system, but I know the two means it's on the second floor. It, the first sign of worrying was that it was already unlocked when we got there. Yes, so. which, if you live in Kremopolis and you leave a door unlocked, you're pretty much asking everything to be stolen. That is in our constitution of Kremopolis. <laughs> oh, I wish the Kremopolis constitution wasn't created. No. See all that alliteration I did there? Yeah? You proud of me, Brooks? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying I'm really hard for you. I'm, I'm something of you. I'm trying to just... I'm trying to make you proud we of me. We made our way into the hotel room, and <laughs> it looked as if no one had ever used it, like, ever. Like... It Ever. was. It was freshly cleaned. Yep. There was no signs of anyone being there. No stuff there. No. Not in the clothes. main room, at least. Not in the main room. In the main yes. room, it just like very you know standard Crimopolis room. You got your sofa. You got your nightstand. You got your TV. You got your bed. You've got the nine one one in blood written on the wall. Standard stuff. Yeah, just every- the usual. Yep. So we made our way to the bathroom, and it was still. It was filled with water. Most likely the ice had melted. Yes. Because he found himself in a bit of uh, ice morty. Oh, that I can... Ooh, I can smell that one. Mm, yeah. uh, well, I'm glad so we're found, sitting so close to each other. The Freak. situation we found ourselves in was that the bathtub was filled with water, 
And over by the sink, we found just the usual stuff. Yep. You know, some Bleach, pesticides, yes. rat decides, human asides. I'm just kidding. There's no human asides. And then... It was just a gun. We found surgical equipment right there yes. underneath it. I mean, and it was freshly bloody, too. Well, fresh within, like, you know... The blood was dried. Yeah, but it... We assumed it was from Lungless Louie, so I think that's pretty fresh. Yeah. He did say he came straight from, to, well, from the hotel to the hospital to our place because the police wouldn't help him. No. But what can you do? Come to the Brooks and Zach Mystery Podcast. That's what they do. Yeah, when you're out of options. You, yeah, when you're sure. on the very last way of whatever. I don't know. I don't know metaphors. He was pretty desperate, is what we're trying oh, to say. Oh, he was. Oof. So Man. we're like, well, not a lot here. We'll, um, we'll have to grab that surgical equipment on our way out, but first let's check out some of the other rooms in the hotel. Right. So we go into the kitchen, which was connected to the main living room. And there was a little office nook. Like, So you were in the kitchen yep. looking through it, and I went into the little office nook. And just like the main room, it looked like no one had ever been in it, ever. Mm-hmm. So I just, you know, just poked around. Yes. Just... Dusted for fingerprints. I took a several I, of his glass cups. I pretended to dust for fingerprints because not only did I not have the equipment, if I did, I would not know what to do with it. Correct. I just sort of like put some dust down and like pantomimed a little little you, like, brush thing. I'm like, mm. you just took the bag of flour that was in the cabinet and just kind of lightly shook it over everything. I'm just like, yeah, like I was shaking it. I was shaking it over. Like, and I pantomimed the little little dust thing. I'm, yeah. I'm like, yes, fingerprints, yes, yes. I, I looked at you for a second, but, you know, I, you were doing your thing. I wasn't going to stop you. You wouldn't let me stop you. No, no, so you I just, tried to. I went back to taking all the silverware. And then I found something interesting. I refuse eating oodles of noodles with a uh, folded up paper plate again. Okay, it's, all right. <laughs> I've been doing that a lot recently. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. And then I found something interesting. I looked in the wastebasket. That is, is interesting. <laughs> I hate. I hate all. I hate you. I understand. Continue. What did you find in said wastebasket? The the wastebasket is usually the private detective's best friend because that's the only way you can get important information. And the wastebasket was empty except for one thing: a crumpled up piece of paper. I'm like, well, with the rest of the hotel room, it's kind of weird that that would be. That would be there. So right. I reached in, I uncrumpled it, and it said Livington Hotel, room 294, 1 a.m. I'm like, huh, hmm. that's weird. That's this, and, you know, that's the time last night, so whatever. So I just sort of crumpled it up and put it in my back pocket. Yep. And then I and then I heard something. A noise coming from, what was it, the bathroom? I wouldn't I'm say like, you heard something. I'd say we heard something. Okay, fine. Yeah. We heard something. Thank and you. God damn it. And then Look. I was like, Zach, did you hear that? And I said, no, why would I hear that? <laughs> I did hear it. I did. Yeah, I'm like, and I did, I did my Brooks face where like I scrunch it up. I'm like, yeah, you scrunch it up and you're just like, what the, don't, what? What? What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, so we're just like, we should probably go check out the bathroom, grab that surgical equipment. So we did, well, we were going to. And we walked into the main room of the hotel, and we were greeted by a new friend, which was a um, strange masked man holding the bag of surgical equipment on his way out the door. And he stopped and looked at us, and we looked at him, and there was a moment where... And then we he just... looked at us. And there was a moment... And then we <laughs> looked at him. And, and there then was he a... looked at us. And there was a moment yeah. where we just sort of <laughs> stood there, and everyone didn't really know what to do, and they bolted out the door. Yes. And yeah, then I did the dramatic clap. Yeah, I heard, I can yeah. see it right there on the audio file. It, because they can't they can't see what like what we saw or anything. We can only describe this, like what happened to us with onomatopoeia. Yes. So we do the we do the clap when he ran. Yeah. And then you immediately ran after him, and I'm like, being the per- kind of person I am, I'm like, oh, running. Oh, do we? Yeah, have... you had to think about it. You, yeah, I had to think. You about, stepped like, out of the room and looked down the hallway as I was like, running. Like as after you him. were chasing him down and everything. Man, a few words. I really hope that the bag of silverware is still in that room because I left it there to chase after him. It's not there anymore, probably. It's, it's, no. I, I forgot to grab it. Dang it. Come on, now I have to eat more. 
anyway. We'll, we'll get silverware. We'll get silverware. Just like, so you chased him down. Yes. He was smart and didn't take the elevator. He went down the stairs and kept running, and you ran after him. Yep. I took the elevator, because I down... was not going down those stairs. <sighs> God, bro. The elevator Look, was I, slow. I agreed that as soon as I got to the ground floor, I would, you know, full in commit to the chase and everything and go after it. But you didn't. I did later on. Bolted through the kitchen mm-hmm. and everything. I remember. Yeah. He, was, he knocked over a lot of things. There was a lot of angry Italian chefs, as most chefs are angry and Italian. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as we got through, went through the kitchen, out the back door, he knocked over the trash cans in the usual way as a person does in a chase. So I have to like do that, ah, God, and like step over him, jump over. And he got to this chain link fence. He scaled up it. I saw he cut himself on the fence as he climbed over it and went, nah, all right. So I'm going to climb over the fence and get him too, but I'm not going to cut my hand as I do it. That'd be stupid if... And then I cut my hand on the fence as I tried going after him. But I fell as I tripped over the fence because I think my foot got caught on, like, one of the... What is it? The holes in the chain link? But I fell. I only saw him run around the corner to the bar. And that's when you decided... See, and then... You see, at that point, I'd gone through the kitchen. I just sort of did a brisk walk through the kitchen, and then I I came out. I'm like, oh, you said there's you were a lot of commits. That I did. Committing. I did at the end. I did at the end because then I'm like, oh, someone needs to clean up these trash cans. They're all on the on the ground and everything. And then I started running. I'm like, don't worry, Zach. I'm on my way. And Brooks, then I got no, to the careful. fence. D- don't careful with the fence. What then? about the fence? As I said, as I was climbing the fence, I'm like, ah, fuck! I cut my hand. I, then I fell over onto you. Yeah. I'm like, hey, hey. Uh, I, I was. I, I'm here too. I committed. I. I was in the chase. Thanks, Brooks. <laughs> so, <laughs> we both said so at the same yeah. time. Because it's, it's we like, have so much in common. We should totally like you know do stuff later, uh, man. No. We should totally. We should totally like horse eats corn later. No, you know? no, you know? no, no, no. <laughs> oh, it's very important. We don't have time for a horse eats corn. Okay, fine. And that all happened in the story, too. I <laughs> that, that exact situation happened in the story at that time. Yes. And then, noticing... <laughs> so you told me that he ran towards the bar. I'm like, he of did. course. The, the Louis, only bar. Longless Louie got picked up at the bar. So It's only natural for the criminal to return to the scene of the crime. Yeah, yeah. At the bar. That must be where he operates. Yes. Is what we figured. So, so we went into the bar. Yeah. And we... It was, as said before, imagine every bar in every movie ever mushed together Mm -hmm. in the ugliest way possible. Yes. And that's the Crimeopolis bar. Mm -hmm. So we went in, and we went to the bartender, and was just like, he was a... He was a fancy looking gentleman with a bald head. You know. Bald head, handlebar mustache, yeah, buff. He was very buff. Ooh, he he had a very tight shirt on, you know, and like a like a vest mm-hmm. type thing. He looked like he was in a kind barber of an shop apron, quartet. Kind of th- but only like a waist apron. Yes, and he was very muscular. Yeah. Ooh, so very, his, we went up to him yeah. and I, I said to you, I remember I said to you, I'm like, Zach, don't worry, I got this. I can get the information from him. Yeah, no, I remember so that. I, remember I that. strolled up to the bar, all casual like. I'm like, hey, you know, have any have any people been uh been abducted in this bar recently? Maybe uh someone by the name of Lungless Louie, who has since become lungless because of that event. And he didn't look at you. He just kept cleaning his glass, just ignoring everything you said. And then I'm like, all right, playing hard to get. And then I reached into my wallet, and I took out a $1 bill, and I slammed it on the bar, and I slid it across. I'm like, will this change your mind? And then he grabbed the $1 bill and went, no. And, and he then, went back well, to will the... this change your mind as I slid another $1 bill across his And bar. as he took that one, he folded it up and put it in his tight vest pocket. No. And then I reached into my wallet. And, and I, I, Brooks, no. And I, then I took out another dollar, and I put it on the bar, and I slid it across. I'm like, how about and he now? Just, he took the dollar before you finished talking and started to walk away. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I have more money. <laughs> Brooks, no, shut up. He doesn't, he's a, he's a bartender. He's one of those stereotype bartenders who's not going to tell you shit. Because he right. thinks you're a narc. God. All right. And then we were like, And he wouldn't right. give us any water or anything. I'm like, can we have some water? Mm. And he spit in a glass and handed it to us. I'm like, no, thank you. Yeah. So we just sort of sat there for a bit. And we noticed that um, some interesting characters 
started to take all the empty seats that were around us. Yes. And then started standing behind us. And then started clustering around us. And then we were like, can we, uh, can we help you gentlemen? And one of them, bo- he did not say a word because his actions were able to speak for him. Yep, actions do speak he louder than words. took out a knife and very slowly slid it into the rib cage of the man next to him who fell over dead. And then a huge bar fight started erupting around us. And I turned to you. I'm like, Zach, I want to go home. <laughs> I wanted to go home too. But first, our mission was to get the fuck out of the bar. Get the fuck out. So we started walking back to the hotel. Yes. And we were like... Wait, the hotel or a motel? I can't remember what hotel, happened. Hotel, motel. You know, That's a have, rap song, right? You have such a way with words, Brooks. <laughs> but as we were ready to head back home... We were just walking, defeated... Along the Crimopolis streets. Avoided several knife wounds, uh, which I was surprised. several knife wounds. Thought we were we going to get killed. We were like, oh man, it's just a dead end. That bar was our only hope. Now we have no idea who might have, you know, committed this horrible, horrible crime. And, but and then, then, in the alleyway, we heard a nice... A majestic voice a say, And I'm like... That is the most beautiful sound I've ever heard in my life. Also, that is a crazy homeless man who's running right at us, Zach. We should probably do something about it. Uh, look, Brooks, the homeless people are like animals. You just gotta toss them a biscuit and be on your way. Or they're actual human beings, you piece of shit. I don't know. I mean, I I started with a small loan of a million dollars. and <laughs> And then the homeless man stopped. He did not attack us. And he started spouting some crazy bullshit. I believe some of the quotes were... I've seen it! I've seen the end of days! I've seen the ambulance! I've seen the man take the organs! I've seen wait, 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 I've wait, seen knife wounds! Wait, ex- se- and I was like, wait a minute, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, good sir. Good sir. Uh, good yes, sir! I'm a sir! Yes, yes. What did you say about I've seen the taking of, of organs? I've seen the organs. They went in the ambulance. Ambulance? Ambulance. Am- <laughs> and he started slinking away. Like, I, like I held him, and he started, like, like, like a gelatinous putty starting falling onto the ground. Not literally. A Not gelatin- literally. It's a metaphor, people. Yeah. He, but like, he just sort of convulsed his- and fell over. Yes. And we left him there, as you do with most homeless people in Crimopolis. And I'm like, Zach. Yes. We have our lead. He yes. saw he saw the organs being taken into the ambulance. But Brooks, he's a homeless man. He could have seen anything, and maybe it was a different guy. Look, it's the only thing we got. Come on, maybe he's crazy. I don't know. All right, well, but Zach, you know, it's the only lead we got, man. I don't care if it comes from a homeless man who's completely untrustworthy and has since then slinked back to his cardboard box. <sighs> okay, well, I guess I can hack into the security cameras and the the lights. At the intersection. Wait, so, when did you learn how to hack? Look, I, I can't hack. I, I just paid, you know, the crossing guard, but it sounds a lot cooler oh, if I was that just... what that was about? Shut the fuck up! Oh, if we just tell the listeners you... that I hacked the cameras, it sounds a lot cooler. Oh. It makes me think I got a lot okay, more... Okay, fine. Don't All worry. Right. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll cut the part when you said you bribed a guard. All right, good. So let me just <clears throat> let me just redo that. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I, I hacked into the lights, yes. and uh, we, we found out where the ambulance... Was we, we saw that on the ambulance it was inscribed Crimopolis General Hospital. I'm yes. like, we have our lead. Yes, that is the nearest, closest hospital. We saw a masked man get out and grab Louie on the street. So it turned out Louie never even made it to the bar. Correct. Lungless Louie, just being like that, being the beautiful soul that he is. The Lucy Lungless Lucy Lo, Lo, Lola. Lo, 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 That's Lola. one of those things. <laughs> Let's go to the hospital, is what we said in the past, <laughs> because this stuff has already happened. Yes. So, <laughs> so spoiler alert, we haven't died yet. No. Mm. But the story's not over. But we could die by the end. You better stay tuned after this commercial break. Hi there. I have genital warts, and I am a survivor. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Buy it today. <laughs> And welcome back. <laughs> welcome back after that commercial break. So we made it to the hospital, and we seem kind of out of place as two very poor-looking men just wandering around being like, Did you take the organs? Yeah, I we really We were yelling think, that at several people. I really don't think we should have been shouting that on our way to the There was the a little boy in a wheelchair, and I gr- went up to him, grabbed his shoulder, and was like, Did you take the organs? And he's like, Yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I need them to live. Oh. 
Oh. I didn't believe him. I know you didn't. I <sighs> wish you didn't shake him as much as you did. He's going to need more organs now. I... <laughs> oh, Brooks, you... Your heart's in the right place, and I wish it wasn't, because then maybe you would fucking do something good with your life. Uh, Brooks. So... You gotta not shake children as much. After we got thrown out by security, we snuck back in, and yes. we went up to the secretary, and we went up and we asked her, have you any idea, has some surgical equipment gone missing, or whatever, has someone stolen an ambulance, what, what's going on here? Uh, mm and she was just filing her long acrylic nails. She had very long nails. They were long and hot pink. Yes. And we were just like, all right. All right, I, I have no like, qualms. I said, mm, what she want to know? Uh, did you, has any surgical equipment gone missing? Has an ambulance been stolen? Has anything suspicious been going on in this hospital? Oh, I don't know. You don't know? Mm. But you, you look like, you look like someone who works here. Mm. Well... I'm not the one who keeps track of the surgical equipment. That is Dr. Kelvin. Dr. Kelvin? Dr. Kelvin. Dr. Kelvin. Nah, -uh. Dr. Kelvin. Dr. Kelvin. Hey, Dr. Kelvin. Okay. Can't, where can we find this Dr. Kelvin? Oh, we just walked past a couple minutes ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, he should be over there, probably uh, sorting through the things. He's very meticulous, like he always comes in, checks to make sure our stock is good and whatnot in the uh, medical supply. Oh, okay. He sounds like exactly the person we got to talk to. Mm. So we went up to this Dr. Kelvin, and he was like, hey, Dr. Kelvin. And Dr. Kelvin was very much like, oh, hello, how can, how can I help you? And he's like, my name is Dr. Kelvin. Uh, hello, nice to meet you, Dr. Kelvin. Can we just call you Dr. K? He's like, no, you can't. No. No, never call me that. Then you confuse me with Dr. Ken. <laughs> and that can never happen. <laughs> I can never allow that to happen. I wish we knew who because Dr. I, Ken was. Because I know that once I cross that line, there's no going back. He and, and he got real silent. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Kelvin. Dr. Kelvin, um, Kelvin, we have some questions for you. We were wondering... Has has anything suspicious been going on in this hospital? Have you noticed anything like surgical equipment gone missing or an ambulance maybe gone missing or and, something uh, like that? He just responded with a quick like pucker of the lips and uh, shaking his head like a... Mm. He's like, no, everything's accounted for from last time I checked. Yeah, can't find anything wrong. Why? Is there something wrong? You boys... He's like, well, not necessarily. We were just, we were just you know, asking because we're um, med students. Oh, uh, well, where'd you go for, uh, med school? Uh, I went to the, I went to John's. John's? Yeah, John's school, the John one that he set up. John's medical school? Yeah. Oh, my cousin went to John's. Oh, really? Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Jonathan. Weird! I had a roommate named Jonathan. And I'm like, Brooks, shut the fuck up! <laughs> no, you did And my, I'm like, Zach, I got this. Well, uh, you you were Jonathan's roommate. Yeah, I was uh was aware that uh, Jonathan's roommate was uh, uh homosexual. Yeah. Oh, huh. I'm really glad I can be more open about that now to people. It really it really makes me makes me happy that you know we've entered an age of more of acceptance. You know. So uh, is this your boyfriend, the one you were uh? Caught uh, making out in the closet with uh, multiple times at John's school? Yes. Like, Sh Brooks! Brooks, I, I did not sign up for this, Brooks. Zach, we, have, we, we, we can't say that we're not gay because we're for gay rights. So well, let me handle this. I don't know. Okay. So, uh, when are you boys uh, thinking of uh, graduating? You know, that's really, that's really not up to me. That's up to the year I'm born, sir. <laughs> anyway, uh, gave him a little light punch. Don't, uh, touch, don't touch me. Uh, you know, I'm uh, very, I like to be very clean and sterile. Yes, yes. Yeah. Clearly, you're a doctor. Yeah. Dr. K, Elvin. Yeah. Dr. K. Yeah. No, not no. Dr. K. Oh, I yeah, told you I'm not sorry. to uh, confuse me with uh, I'm sorry. Dr. K. It is a I'm road very... I do not want to go down, as I said before. Do you uh, remember? <laughs> I, I remember that pretty Okay, clear. I'm just making sure you remember. Well, if everything, yeah. you know, checks out, then... Uh... All right, yeah, I gotta go anyway. I just, uh... Got some, uh, I got some, uh, I got errands. Gotta run, it's, uh, not my, it's, uh, not my day to work. I just had to, uh, count some, uh, they called me and, uh, I gotta count. So uh, I'll just be, uh, just, uh, just, uh, just, uh, just be on my way, uh, just be on my way now. Just, uh, I'll just go. 
Uh, all right. Bye. And then he he left in quite a he hurry. He ran out of there. And then we were like, well, that, that was an odd conversation. Well, it was. It's... And I, we sort of went over to the secretary and we're like, why was he in such a hurry? He seems like kind of an odd character. Oh, well, doc, Dr. K. Elvin didn't work today, so, uh, he's always very meticulous, though, like I said. He's, uh... Mm. Oh, Dr. Kelvin, he is one of the best surgeons we have ever had on this side of Crimopolis, I'll tell you that. He just likes to take care of his things and go back home. I He's like, what... go back home, it's the middle of the day. Why was he even at the hospital? He uh, kind of hurt his hand earlier. He said he did it while he was uh, preparing some food for his family. He is such a nice family man, I'll tell you that. Wait, wait, wait a minute, what? He... I said he's such a nice family no, man. No, no, I heard that. Yeah. You said he, uh, you said he cut his hands? Yeah, cutting vegetables or some shit. Huh. Hmm. This meticulous man, the surgeon, uh, cut his hands cooking vegetables. And I found the sod, you found the sod, the little boy in the wheelchair who you shook rapidly found it odd that we were still standing in the hospital. <laughs> he got us kicked out again. Yes. But from there, we followed, we decided to follow Dr. K. Elvin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I think I'll just call him Dr. Kelvin, because that's a lot easier. Yeah, it's probably very easy but he was just he was very I mean, we didn't include that in the story but he spent a long time making sure we would call him dr kelvin yeah so we followed this dr kelvin yes. for a while and he did not go to a quaint family home as was previously suspected no he instead went to the abandoned warehouse district one of the abandoned warehouse districts one of many many abandoned warehouse districts <laughs> <laughs> so as we uh, followed him into the warehouse district, we saw... Well, the... well. <laughs> we we were panting pretty heavily, and we were, and I... Because he had a car, we did not have I a remember car. him saying, we should really get a car. Yeah. I'm still thirsty. I was thirsty earlier, and I'm still thirsty. Yeah. You could have gotten a drink at the bar, but the whole fight broke out, and yeah. spit in your glass. I wasn't going to drink spit. No. So I'm like, huh... Oh. Well, wow. so we went we went into the, we went into the warehouse and we were panting pretty heavily. I'm like, oh, man, oh, I think I gotta rest for a minute. I don't see him anywhere. Maybe uh, maybe there's a drink in one in this uh in this refrigerator here. Maybe like a soda or an iced tea. And I that's what I, that's what I suspected. And I opened it up and my immediate reaction I remember was to slam the door and go like, oh my god. Oh my god. Yep. Oh god. Well, oh my god. You... All right. I had my hands on my face like, oh my god. Oh, all right. Oh my god. Yeah. I was pacing a bit. I'm like, oh my god. I'm just like, Brooks, are you, you okay? You There was not ice There tea? was a heart in a jar. There was uh, a liver. There was some lungs. There was some other things that were probably kidneys, but I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't know these parts. I failed anatomy class in, As, in my school. Yeah. There was a leg. There was a whole lot of stuff that I was not happy about it, and 0% of it was iced tea. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was, and I was oh like, boy. well, let me check this other fridge. Maybe this other fridge has some... Oh! No! <laughs> nope, it is just full of organs. I, I have a bad feeling about these dozens of fridges around yeah. us. So it turns out this warehouse was full full of fridges that were full of human organs. Yes. We didn't check all the fridges because we were uh, very, very stressed out at that you, point. You were very shaken up about that. I was quite shaken up about it. He's like, okay, uh, I think we found our guy. I don't know where he is, but let's let's take a look around some of the stuff. Yes. So we're looking around. Uh, you didn't really... What did you find? Oh, I found uh, several things, in fact. Most of them were fridges filled with organs. But uh, another thing I found was just a nice little wastebasket. I think it was made of oak, carved very well. I, it was kind of out of place, nice. but I didn't understand. I was I was looking around, and I found a little, little desk thing, and I looked at a letter on it, typed out, nice and ni nicely done. It's just like, it said, it was addressed to Dr. Kelvin. It said on the top, Dear Dr. Kelvin... We are glad to see the numbers that you are currently pulling in, and it looks like you're going to make the quota for this for this quarter. And we are very, very proud of you, and we will continue to support your operation here at this warehouse. And at this point, you were kind of reading it out loud, so I would hear it, even yeah. though we were like several fridges away at this point. And it's just like, we, we, are, we look forward to this continuing business relationship between our, both you and our organization. Sincerely... Mr. E. And I'm like, Mr. E. Yeah. Who is this? 
Who or what is this mystery? Yeah, it seems seems like like we have quite a Mr. E puzzle on our hands. We have quite the Mr. E conundrum on our hands. Yeah. We better get to the bottom of this mystery (laughs) puzzle that is placed in front of us. And I guess in the time it took us to make all these terrible pun jokes... From the obvious, from the obvious name of mystery, mystery, mystery. Yes. <laughs> so from that obvious name, we made a lot of puns, and in the meantime, Doctor Kelvin had emerged with a gun yes. and had confronted the two of us. It was just a handgun, so I mean, but it was we didn't have any guns. He's like, he a- ah, hi there. Uh, what you uh, what you uh, what what uh, what what what's you what you guys doing here, huh? So uh, we turned around, standing together, we put our hands up, and we were just like, Doc, Dr. Kelvin, we have discovered that you are actually probably evil and harvesting organs from innocent people. Uh, under uh, what basis do you uh, have, that, uh, that, have, that, have that assumption? Uh, well, for one, you cut your hands, escaping from the hotel scene. Also, all of these fridges of fucking organs! Uh, I see your point, so I guess I should just uh, shoot you both. And, wait. Uh, get away with it. Wait, wait. Before you do that, you have to tell us what organization are you working for? What is this letter talking about? What do you mean by all this? Oh, oh you want me to uh to reveal this uh this uh this this whole little plan you got going on here? Uh yeah, yeah. That's Why would I, I do that? Because we're gonna die anyway, and you might as well tell us. Yeah, no, no, no. I, my plan, my current plan is uh is uh is uh, is, uh, is, uh, is to shoot you. Is to just uh, put a bullet in your head and possibly your uh, your uh, genitals, but uh, if say that plan does not work, uh, why would I? Why would I tell you uh, anything? Cause... Why would I risk? Uh, why would I risk any of that? Cause uh, you're a nice man. Mom, a nice man to my uh, family and coworkers, but uh, you're not uh, you're not any of them. So you're just gonna shoot us now? Yeah, it is my current plan. Yes, but we were getting pretty nervous as we were. Just, you know, kind of at, held at gunpoint from Dr. Calvin. We thought it was a, there was a very good chance we were going to die there. A very, very high chance. Yeah. High probability. So, but I, I had a plan to get us out of the situation where I had one final question to, that could save both of us that I decided to ask Dr. Kelvin. And I said, Dr. Kelvin, before you shoot us, ah. answer this one question. I, I already told you why uh, I'm not... Do you know... The Muffin Man. Uh, is that uh, really uh, the, is that what you uh, really wanted to say? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and at- then he start, he uh, he opened fire. He hit me in the leg, and I said, "Fuck! Oh God!" And I fell over. And then you sprung into action. Yep, and I sprung into action by throwing open the fridge door, hiding behind it, and picking up a, a jar that had a heart inside of it. And so. With gusto, I pulled my arm back and shouted, Who do you think you are, Mr. Doctor, running around leaving scars? Col- well, time to collect your jar of hearts. And, and then he threw it at his face, he's like, Ah! Oh! <laughs> and he, like, it, it, like, glass broke in his face. He's like, Ah! Oh! He passed out. And I'm like, Oh, that's fucking sweet. <laughs> then, it's fucking Mills. Fuck, dude. <laughs> and so, but, so, we, uh, called the police. Yeah. We got them there, and they're like, Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks. Thanks for thanks. You can leave now. You can. And we're like, all right, well, you've done. You've done some good work, which is good because we obviously wouldn't have solved this crime. We wouldn't have bothered. I'm like, well, that's that's reassuring to hear uh, from a the from police. a police officer. Yeah, <laughs> from an officer of the law. But uh, they insisted that they they had it from here and that we could just go home and should probably get your leg looked at. They seemed kind of standoffish and kind of, I don't want to say threatening. But they were kind of a little threatening. Ah, huh? They're just police officers. That's what they do. I mean, it was just a front they put up. I, I wouldn't look too much into it. So I carried you to the hospital. We got your leg patched up. And then we got thrown out again because you just wouldn't leave that fucking boy in the wheelchair alone. He is suspicious. He's not. We solved the crime. He is one suspicious motherfucker. Okay, hang on. Think of supervillains. Lex I, Luthor, bald. Yeah. How many kids do you know that are bald? He's clearly evil. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. 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 
Okay, you good? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Okay, so we got back. Uh, Lungless Lou, he was waiting for us. And he was just like, well, did, you, did you guys get the get the job done? Uh, you, you took only like an hour to solve the crime. So I was expecting you to... I was expecting you to just, you know, go to the hotel and maybe come back and tell me what you find, so I just waited here for an hour, and you just solved the whole crime. That's actually kind of impressive. Yeah, I didn't expect uh, any of that to go down the way yeah, it did. Don't worry, Lungless Louie, you only get the best from us. Brooks and Zach, 100 Years, Mystery Podcast, Detective Agency. Only the best, Lungless Louie. Stop Louis. touching me. Don't no. worry, Lungless Louie, I'll no. stop touching you. No, you're not, you're not, ugh, okay. Well... I'm going to go back to the hospital, because I, I don't know if I was stitched up the right way. And then I made sure to give that kind of end of sitcom dialogue line that was like, Oh, don't worry. I think y- your uh, doctor is the best behind bars. Yeah. And then he just went, What? The, the doctor. The, do- the best doctor in Crimopolis was, uh, was the one who took out your organs. And he's like, What the fuck? And... After that, without saying anything else, he paid us and left, and we just sort of stood there in silence awkwardly, and we're like, this, life is not a sitcom. Life isn't a sitcom. And we were just kind of sad by that. Yeah. But then, anyway. Yeah. It was great. It was great. First case. First case. It was done in record-breaking time, maybe. I don't know. Uh, maybe. It's our record that we broke. We did break our own records. Yes. I wish we had something to listen to now. <laughs> <laughs> Bottoms. Anyway. <laughs> so, I think that was that was a pretty good adventure. Yep. So Oh fuck, we didn't talk about pop culture stuff. Uh, oh, whatever. Yeah, what, that's whatever. Fine. That's... We'll We'll make this a special episode, the... a special mystery hour. Yeah, and if you guys have any mysteries you need solved, just email us at uh, what's the email? Brooks and Zach hundred years at gmail dot com. Yeah, we will solve any mysteries that you send to us. Maybe or, I don't know. Or your money back. Or your money will be given to someone. Probably me giving it to Zach, or Zach giving it to me. It, it, most definitely. And if you like what we do here, go you can ahead. follow us on Twitter at Hundred Years Pod, but also individually at me at Squeezy McCheesy and Zach at Brave Snuggles. He does not tweet. I'm the one who uses Twitter. I don't tweet at all. If somebody tweets at me, I'll look at it and go, oh, that's nice. And that's about it. You can also follow me on Pinterest, at Brave Snuggles. Oh, then the Pinterest. All right. We have a Tumblr that we uh, upload these things to on a regular basis. At Pride Point. Yep. That's, that's, the, that's the Tumblrs. Uh, our main avenue of uploading content is on SoundCloud. So if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, good job. But you can also find us on iTunes, you know, and their podcast service. And we're also uploading each episode on our YouTube channel, 100 Years. 100 Years. Yeah, so every episode is uploaded on SoundCloud and iTunes and every you... Sunday. And then the episode will be uploaded on YouTube in video format on the following Wednesday each week. And if you have your uh, your little punch card, then you have 10 views and you get your 11th view free. Yeah, you can view our content for free that 11th time. Yes. Yes. But every other time, you have to give us a tenth of a cent, maybe. A tenth of one tenth of one tenth of one tenth of a piece they... of toast. Ooh, I would love me to have that crumb of toast. Mmm, yeah. Real good. <sighs> this is a terrible way to end a podcast. Yeah. Well, well let's just end Just the do your usual sign-off. Yeah, right? We can save it. Just do your usual yep. sign-off that you always do. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right. So what you're going to do is... Open your eyes shut as high as they can. Raise the the eyebrows up to the heavens and drop your jaw down to the floor. There is nothing much else you can do except sway from side to side. Eyes agape, mouth unhinged, arms up as if you're ready to score a touchdown. You bring your hands to touch together as your hands themselves touch your head at the same time, saying, <gasps> Rooks and Zach, hundred years! Thanks for watching, everybody. That was, that was a heck of a ride. See ya. That got, why? Can't I have the last word? No.